Many people are hearing about uh, the Red Sea nowadays due to the uh, Houthi-led uh, attacks. The Red Sea is a vital uh, waterway for global trade. Around 12% of global trade passes through the Red Sea. I'm Noam Redan, a senior fellow at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy, where I focus on shipping and energy in the Middle East. I'm Dr. Mike Knight, uh, the Jill and Jay Bernstein Fellow at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. The Houthis are a clan-based tribal movement that modeled themselves on Lebanese Hezbollah and currently control northwestern Yemen. The Houthis have a relatively short piece of Red Sea coastline uh, between the ports of Hodeida and Salif on the Red Sea coast. Also, we have the important choke point called the Bab el Mandeb. Bab el Mandeb is a very narrow strait, and that's why ships that are passing through the strait become very close to the Yemeni coastline. And for this reason, uh, given the uh, Houthi led attacks, uh, ships uh, face more threats uh, nowadays. The Houthis have come within one mile of hitting a US ship with an anti ship cruise missile. The Houthis have been using different types of weapons to target commercial vessels, including drones anti-ship ballistic missiles. At least one ship called the Marlin Luanda caught fire because of a missile that was launched by the Houthis. The United Nations panel of experts has confirmed that the Houthis sourced the majority of their weapons from Iran and Lebanese Hezbollah. On November 19, uh, 2023, the Houthis hijacked uh, the Galaxy Leader. The Houthi used a helicopter to hijack the ship, take it to Yemen. The ship, along with the crew, uh, remained there, and it happened uh, amid the uh, war between Hamas and uh, Israel. We still don't know uh, if there has been any pro progress uh, with respect to the talks to release the ship and the uh, seafarers. They are not linking all of their attacks to Israeli ships. But that's not the point. The point is, whether they're attacking Israeli ships or American ships, they're still doing it because the Gaza war began and they want to support Hamas. And they consider the Americans to be part of Israel's alliance. Uh, due to the Houthi-led attacks, we have more than 10 global shipping companies that have decided to avoid the uh, Suez Canal, the Red Sea, uh, Gulf of Aden. Now what they're doing is that they're going around the Cape of Good Hope. This means that the, sh the, the, the vessel needs more time, probably around two weeks from uh, the port of departure to its destination. There will be extra uh, money that needs to be spent on fuel. It can reach like around $1 million. And uh, because of these diversions, the freight rates uh, have increased. On top of that, when ships divert around the Cape of Good Hope, this means that seafarers are being forced to spend more time at sea, away from their families, uh, away from their you know, uh, lives uh, on land. A lot of seafarers are present on commercial ships that are coming under fire uh, from areas in Yemen that are controlled by the Houthis. A lot of seafarers are putting their lives uh, at risk when they pass through those waterways. Seafarers of different nationalities operate the commercial vessels that are passing through Bab el Mandeb and the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden. It is very important to ensure uh, safety of navigation in Gulf of Aden uh, and, the, and the Red Sea. The Houthis have been at war for 20 years now. First 10 years with the Yemeni government, second 10 years with the Saudi-led coalition. So they are extremely pain tolerant and they're not afraid of the US or Israel. The Houthis will never be deterred by military strikes. They can absorb almost any amount of punishment. Uh, they were undergo, they underwent huge uh, numbers of military strikes by the Yemeni government from 2004 until 2014. And then since then, they've been fighting the Saudi-backed coalition. So they've been under air attack for almost 20 years now. Uh, instead, uh, the US and the UK are largely removing Houthi military capabilities, one missile at a time. If you imagine, the Houthis have a limited stock of advanced anti-shipping missiles, long-range ballistic missiles, and cruise missiles uh, to fire at, for instance, Israel or the Saudi capital of Riyadh or the capital of the UAE in Abu Dhabi. As long as we prevent the Houthis from being resupplied by the Iranians, uh, they have a finite number of these advanced conventional munitions. The Houthis are now using them at quite a rapid rate and we're destroying many of them as they're brought out of hiding and as they're prepared for launch. So the US and UK are reducing the number of advanced conventional munitions that the Houthis have under their control. And we're hoping that they'll basically run out before the end of the Gaza war 
Uh, when the Houthis are likely to power down and after having supported Hamas throughout the entire conflict. My colleague Farzim Nadim and myself have created a new interactive mapping tool for the Washington Institute. The map uh, we have created would serve as a reference people can use in order to go back to at least, for now, at least 2019 and take a look at the different attacks on uh, ships that have been taking place in the Persian Gulf, in Gulf of Amman, Arabian Sea, Gulf of Aden, Bab al and, uh, and the Red Sea. And those attacks have not only been carried out by the Houthis, of course. We've seen attacks blamed on Iran and even at least one that has been blamed on Israel, given even um, the so-called shadow war between Israel and, uh, and Iran. So we've been trying to put all that data in one place, summarize it so that researchers, analysts uh, can make use uh, uh, of the data, especially uh, right now, given that the data is uh, everywhere, we're trying to put it in one place and hopefully it will be useful for a lot of people out there.